Jeff here with you again this week with uh, Cove Student Hannah. Uh, it's December, it's uh, exam time for a lot of university and college kids and uh, even high school kids will be writing some exams. So I thought uh, this week we'd talk a little bit about, uh, about some good study habits and how to survive the, uh, the exam. So when you're setting up your studying schedule, the first thing to make sure is that you have a calendar where you can write down when all of your exams are, just to make sure you're organized and planning around each day depending on how long it will take to study for each one. The next thing is to make sure you have a nice organized workspace, um, very organized and clean, limiting distractions, so putting phones away and music away, um, having everything you need, so a computer, pen and paper, um, and your calendar next to you and any books that you might need, um, just making sure that you are ready for studying. So everybody has different learning styles, and you really have to decide what your learning style is. Uh, some people are able to read and maybe highlight uh, through their textbook or through their notes uh, to go back to review and they learn better uh, visually and reading. Some people uh, need to be writing, so um, they'll be writing out their notes, they'll be making cue cards, uh, and that's the way they need to, to link their brain in, and for studying. Other people can do it auditory, so, the, so they can listen to the lecture uh, a few times and, and, and that's how they learn and that's how their brain uh, takes it in. Uh, some people are more, a little more tactile, so if, you know, if you're in engineering or, or other, uh, even chiropractic college, getting your hands on the bones or getting your hands on things and feeling it um, emphasizes to your brain uh, what's going on. So everybody has a different style, so you really need to discover uh, what's your best style. So when you're planning out your studying time, you want to make sure that you're studying in chunks, so one to two hours at a time with a five to ten minute break in between to kind of give your brain time to process everything you've been reading. Um, during this break time, you want to make sure you get up and move and have nutritious snacks, so water, um, some fruit, some healthy granola bars and nuts. You want to avoid sugar and caffeine as sugar can actually make you crash after a few hours, so it won't be very helpful when you're studying. And caffeine can actually alter your brain function, so it's best to avoid that when you're studying. So everybody's, again, everybody's a little different in their, in their studying methods. Uh, some people find that, uh, that they have no problem at the library uh, studying, that uh, they don't get distracted, um, and it's nice and quiet. Other people find that there's still too many distractions, it's not comfortable, they need to be at home uh, and comfortable in a setting that they, that they like. Uh, other people find they need to be in groups, and I know people like that, that they, they, they get together in groups and they can bounce questions off each other, or they just like to have that social aspect uh, when, they're, uh, when they're studying. So again, it all, all depends on what, what's your best way of studying, and that's something you kind of have to find on your own. Um, you'll also find that, that learning in chunks, um, as we described, learning for an hour or two. Uh, what they have found with, uh, with uh, studies is that cramming is, is one of the worst things you can do. You're trying to put all these different things inside your brain, and we don't learn that way. Our brain doesn't learn very well that way. It learns in small chunks. They call it seven plus or, or minus nine, so you kind of learn seven things at a time, uh, and then you learn seven more things at a time, and then you learn seven more things at a time. So learning in small chunks, I would say for an hour or two hours at the most, um, is a good way to go. And getting up and moving and taking a break gives the brain a chance to kind of, kind of um, reprogram itself, reorganize itself uh, to get ready for the next, uh, the next event. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit of how I got through uh, university and high school for study. I was kind of a guy that needed to be on my own for studying. I wasn't a group studier. Uh, you know, I had friends that, that did get together as, as groups, but uh, that was not me. Uh, and I did find that uh, working in the library was not good for me uh, because too, too many people come up and, and ask me questions or bother me or I just wasn't comfortable. Uh, I look more out the window than I look at my books. Um, I also found when I got home, it was comfortable. Uh, we had an extra bedroom that I could set up uh, in and, and I could clutter up as much as I wanted to. Um, and uh, just my kind of comfortable, comfortable space. Um, I also found that, that uh, I, would I would start studying probably about two weeks before my exams, uh, at least. Uh, even if I had classes, I would take a little bit of time each day and start to review, uh, especially those exams I thought were going to be a little bit harder. I would start to do just a little more review uh, on those exams and try, try and get ahead of the game a little bit. I also was a little different in that I actually had music playing when I was studying for my exam. So it's in the background, very, very lightly I, or softly, I'd have some 60s or 70s music playing. And what I found interesting is sometimes I'd be writing an exam and I, and I could close my eyes, I could visually kind of see the page I was reading. I was more of a, 
a, a learner that I read and I highlight uh, my stuff so I could actually see that page and, and I could listen to the music and I could hear the song that was playing when I was reading that page and that page would come back to me um, and, uh, and help, me, uh, help me that way. So it was a little odd uh, in that regard. Uh, but I also found that what I did is I'd study for a couple hours in the morning uh, and then I'd come out and generally have a snack or, or make lunch uh, and take a little bit of a break. Uh, and then I go back at it for a couple more hours in the afternoon, uh, come out, uh, make some dinner, uh, and then I go back in and I study again a couple hours a night. But 10 o'clock was it. At 10 o'clock, that was it for me. Studying was done. Um, and generally, I'd go out for a walk or even a, a short run uh, just to clear my head. Little did I know that, that what I was doing, because now studies have shown that, that uh, movement is medicine it's, and it's, it's brain medicine, that, that when you when you exercise, the brain is, it's called neuroplasticity, and the brain is actually reprogramming itself and creating new networks, uh, and you actually learn more uh, after exercise. Uh, so I didn't even know I was doing it at the time, but my going for a walk or for a run at 10 o'clock at night was actually good for me reprogramming um, everything I've taken in. What they have found is cramming is the actually worst thing you can do. Um, so at 10 o'clock, that was it, because they found that, again, cramming um, your brain wasn't alert, you'd make more mistakes uh, uh, on the paper, uh, you'd read the questions wrong, or you'd, uh, you'd miss a word, or you'd miss a, miss a number, and you'd get it wrong. So 10 o'clock was it, my walk, and my, uh, and my, or my run, and I went to bed. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the video this week on, on study habits. Hope you get something out of it. Uh, you can apply it to, uh, to the way you're going to study, and it uh, helps you get through uh, the study period a little uh, a little uh, less stress. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email us at jgoldsworthy at goldsworthywellness.com. As always, I'm here with Dr. Jeff, and I'm Hannah. And we've got you back.